No, mine. Mine? No, mine. Mine. What's up, everybody? Graver here, and today, yes, we are going to be taking a look at this, the new hotness from Worker, the Seagull. So, I got my Seagull on pre-order from Containment Crew. Uh, the, I did purchase this. This was not sent to me for review. But, as with any review I do on the channel, whether something is sent to me or I purchase it myself, my opinions are that of my own and never influenced in any outside way. Uh, that being said, getting into the review, we are going to uh, follow the usual formula, where we are going to go over the aesthetics of the blaster, what this happens to come with, uh, go over how it actually works, take it over to the workbench, open this up to see what is on the inside of it. I'm going to give you some FPS readings after that while I give you my final thoughts. So, going over the aesthetics of this blaster, uh, the blaster itself uh, comes in four different flavors, uh, purple, teal, white, and I believe tan, and if I'm wrong on that color, I will put it here. I know, unlike the, uh, a few of the previous iterations, like the Nightingale, the Harrier, and the Swift, this does not have an all-orange, uh, version, much to Captain Xavier's chagrin. But, going from the back to the front of this, uh, what this does have, it has a, what I'm calling a shoulder plate. Um, it's a non-adjustable stock that literally just goes right on the ass end of this buffer tube. So you can remove this and put on a different stock or a buffer tube style stock. I do happen to have two in the workshop on my wall here, the one for the Nexus and then the one for the Dartone Pro Mark 1.1. However, neither one of those fit this. The 1.1 fits maybe about halfway onto it and then gets stuck, which sucks. However, where it got stuck and the length of the uh, the stock itself actually gave me like the perfect length for this. And I'm like, oh, that's nice. Um, and that was like really good. Uh, however, the actual buffer tube stock there which is a Magbull knockoff by Worker, I believe. Um, I got that from Foam Blast a while back. Uh, but yeah, that particular stock does not work with this buffer tube because it is actually too small to fit onto here. And I actually did get some scuff marks on my buffer tube trying to fit it on and then trying to yank it off because it was getting stuck. Uh, shout outs to Cam and David from the Foam Coalition, though, who uh, gave me some heads up on these. Uh, Cam had mentioned that, while well, yeah, I have that on the Nexus Pro, um, the Nexus Pro stock actually does fit on this. So if you happen to like that one, or if you just want to have a temporary stock while you get a better one, you can actually utilize one of those, which actually makes me wonder. I wonder if the... Uh, Striker stock will fit on this. I'll have to try that one out later. Uh, but also, uh, thank you to David. Um, he had a couple of different uh, buffer stocks because of his love of Airsoft, I think. Or at least he had a bunch. And also tried them on Airsoft uh, guns too. But either way. neither here nor there. He did find one that works on this thing that he was able to find on Evike, which... He sent me the link for, and I have on order, which did ship, but not in time for the review. Uh, if it works, actually, no, I'll have the link for it down below. And if it doesn't work, then if you don't see the link, then it didn't work. But if it's there, it works. So, and if you like that, if you happen to like that style, then go for it. Uh, so, yeah, moving on now, you have this uh, rubberized grip. Uh, well, actually, it's not even a rubberized grip. It's actually a a rubber wrap that goes around the grip, which is very similar to what is on the Harrier and also the Nightingale. Uh, it is fully removable. It's not glued down. So if you want to remove it to paint or open up the blaster itself, 
uh, you can pull it off because I'm sure there are some screws that are going to be underneath there. Uh, but also speaking of the grip itself, you do have this very nice and uh, metal uh, plate here at the bottom. You also do have some metal here in the trigger well. I'm honestly not 100% sure why, but sure, why not? But also, you do have a metal trigger as well. Um, moving on to just the body for a quick second, uh, you will notice that there really is no paint on this thing whatsoever. And it's like that on this side as well. Uh, the markings on it are also extremely minimal. You have uh, this little spot here on the front half of the blaster for uh, a set of worker brand stickers that will actually go there if you would like to put those on um, but outside of that you have uh, the seagull here for the blaster and then right here by the safety you have safe mode here fire mode here a smiley face and then your made in china uh, markings there and outside of that there's nothing else um, on here so I mean that's Honestly, really nice. There actually isn't even a worker. Yeah, there isn't even a, uh, I just realized, there is not even a worker stamp on the body of the blaster. You have it here on the grip, and obviously the magazine and the, uh, the foregrip. But yeah, there's no worker logo on this, so. Hmm. Um, okay, so now moving on. Uh, it does come with a 15 round Talon magazine. This is short dart only, much like the Nightingale and the Harrier and also the Swift. Um, you do get the release here to pull out the magazine and this is a curved style 15 round mag. I don't know if workers are going to start selling these in multiple colors or if you're only going to get black ones or not, but it's this particular style and it does work with obviously normal talent magazines so you don't have to worry about oh I gotta buy like 15 new magazines but knowing some of us in this hobby you will anyway <laughs> but the other thing is there is no gravity drop on this thing so here I have the uh, paddle pushed in yeah there's no gravity drop on it uh, there, one good thing though is this does have a skinny pusher in it, so you can unload the magazine at any point in time without having to prime the blaster. Uh, so that is definitely a plus to it. Now, I'm not 100% sure if this was a pre order bonus or not, uh, but this does, mine does have the metal side, side rails along with a full metal top rail, along with these really, really nice iron sights or glow sights, I should say. I think pinpoint it's not pinpoint side because those are the other ones that I have but yet yeah, uh, these particular sites which I've tried to find that I've never been able to find a nice set um, if you happen to know of one let me know because I would like to put them on some of my other ones but I really do like these sites so I'm very happy with those um, and they do have like the fiber optics in it so you know under light they glow so you can see the green dots so very nice um, Moving forward now, you do have your vertical foregrip, which, excuse me, which is also your priming uh, handle as well. So you pull this back, and much like the Harrier, this is spring-assisted uh, firing. So I'm just going to fire this one round off. And, yeah, so if you are priming this thing, you can let it go and... That's actually kind of cool, but this does not have slam fire, so you can actually deprime it and be totally safe. So that's very, very much liked. Now, in regards to the actual vertical foregrip, I like it and I don't. Um, for the aesthetics of the way this thing looks, because if anyone's into airsoft or real steel or anything like that, this has some, at least to me... And I could be wrong, uh, but to me this has like kind of an MP5 feel to it. So it is a very nice, short, compact blaster. Uh, 
actually, this is about the size of an SBL. Um, so if you're, in case you're looking for size comparisons. But the one thing is, though, this is really small, especially for me. Um, here you can kind of see my hand does not fit on this thing. Like, as soon as I start wrapping fingers around it, my pinky misses it completely. And my ring finger catches the front of it, but I then lose purchase because I have no back for it. So, I wish they had either a full-size grip on it, or at least didn't have this cut out, and just had it flat. If, if they had that, it would be a little bit better, but I may have to wind up getting a better uh, front grip for this thing. So, and last thing I just want to touch on on the aesthetics of this is... Uh, this. It does come with a worker style injected molded scar barrel. You will see pictures of this thing with their metal bearing scar on it because they also did that with the Harrier. Neither one, unless there's some kind of a special sale that or a promotion that the particular seller is doing, they don't come with that. They come with this. So if you happen to see it on the box and actually the box art for this thing actually shows the bearing scar but yet it comes with this so I'm not too salty about it I do happen to like these um, I've actually just started getting bearing scars and truthfully the worker one is kind of ugly um, so hopefully once Gavin Fuzzy gets uh, his back on sale, I might pick up one or two, depending on the cost of it. Definitely getting at least one. But, yeah. So that's everything for this uh, part of the review. Let's go over to the workbench. We're going to take a look at this and also take a look at some of the other accessories this comes with, which is actually a long spring, a long barrel, um, and this does also come with darts as well. So I'll just show them off there and uh, a couple of uh, spare parts, but they're very, very small spare parts. But either way, let's just go to the workbench and we'll take a look at things. Okay, so we are over here on the workbench. I did want to point out a couple of things. Uh, one thing I did leave out is it does come with uh, Worker Gen 3 purple and orange darts. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, it also does come with a longer barrel and a high-powered spring which we'll just put off to the side there. It also does come with a couple extra O-rings and springs, which I'm kind of glad. Also, you do get some extra um, uh, screws as well, which is very helpful. Now, it comes with two size Allen wrenches. One is kind of like the sticker one, uh, which the only need that you should have for that is to put on the uh, vertical grip because it does not come attached when you... Uh, first get it out of box um but yeah the that you have to put on with the big one everything else uses this really really tiny one and it does give you an option here i think it, it might be blocked but yeah there we go there you can see there is a spot for it in there however it does stick out like that and honestly i don't like that i'm gonna be constantly afraid i'm gonna lose it so rather than keep it there i'm keeping it with all of the spare stuff and if i need to take this to an event and ah that's why uh my allen key or my allen wrench is actually bent upwards which is why it's sticking out like that so i don't know if that was something that it just got caught when it was getting boxed up at the factory or what but yeah i'm not keeping mine in the buffer tube i will keep this out and like throw it in my uh repair work box or something like that but anyway when you get this this is all separated out you have to install your metal rails on it uh you have to install the vertical foregrip and you also have to push it together now to take it apart once it is all together you actually have an option of going one of two ways um if all you're doing is swapping out a spring you have to, these are your main body screws holding it together. And then you have four screws in the top rail. You have two here on the front end, two here on the back end. 
since I'm going to be opening up the back end of it, I've already removed the two back screws here. So for now, all we have to do is remove this here. And this one. And now once and when you push everything together, there is a bit of uh, tension. So you will have to make sure that I think about all the way. Uh, so it may wind up like kind of popping out or something. So just be mindful of that. So there we have it. So when you do get this, this front end will have your plunger and breech here. And as I had mentioned earlier, it is a skinny breech. So there is that. You also have the, you can see in there much better, the spring assisted return on that. Uh, one thing I did neglect to, neglect to mention, which again, I apologize for this. Sometimes I get a little scatterbrained. Uh, one thing I like about this is the fact that the barrels are actually screwable. Like you can just unscrew the short barrel and screw in the long barrel without having to do anything. You don't have to worry about like a retaining bolt or anything or, or O-ring or at nothing. You just literally unscrew, unscrew one barrel and screw another one in. And that is awesome. Um, especially if you're going to run this with the high powered spring, which I will be uh, putting in, but yeah, that is honestly like freaking awesome. So I do really like that. Um, now just going over another, uh, one thing real quick to remove the shoulder plate. You don't have to remove out both screws, but you do have to remove this one because this one actually we sorry there we go that's just you can see right there there's that's uh that little hole there that's actually the screw holding that in place so there's that so and then as i had said um you know we'll just take this out right now because here is your plunger and Different from what they did with the uh, Swift, which was all metal internals, including a metal uh, plunger tube. This is just, uh, this is actually plastic, which is much nicer because then this is lightweight. So it travels, you don't need such a heavy spring moving a giant metal uh, piston, basically. So I'm going to just take a moment to open this up um oh before i do that that's one thing i wanted to point out um with the trigger i do like this trigger design much more than the swift originally one uh this is also the same trigger design as on the harrier however i did notice the trigger okay it's not working right now because there's nothing uh nothing in there but before the trigger return I'm not a fan of it. It's, it's kind of very light. Like if I pulled it, it was taking like a while or it was getting stuck before moving up. So that is something I'm going to hopefully be able to address while I have this open. Uh, so I'm going to just take a minute, get this open, and then I'll be back in a moment. A few minutes later. Okay. So I have all of these screws out of this thing and this is what we got inside. Um, yeah, there is not much to it. It's literally just the plunger tube, the catch, the trigger, and your safety. Oh, and the uh, the magazine release. Um, I can see that's lubed up really nicely, which is good. Um, I am taking points away from Worker because like uh, Dart Zone, which has been amazing when it comes to removing blasters of having screws all the same size, this does not. Uh, the screw sizes are wildly all over the place like you have two different size screws for here two different size screws for here two different size screws for here 
uh, that one is just that one there. And then the one in the dead center is probably the longest screw possible. So, yeah, uh, there's that. So, and I think the, uh, yeah. Okay, so my catch spring just flew out to God only knows where, which, thank God they give you spares. So, um, hopefully I will be able to find that spring. If not, like I said, you will get, you get, uh, it looks at two spares, which is nice. Um, however, I do want to see if I can find something a little better than that particular spring. Because, like I said, I'm... I'm not happy with that. That It seems like it's a slow return and I don't like it. So I'm going to see if I can upgrade that spring. But other than that, <laughs> there's not much else you can do with this right now. Um, so yeah, there are your internals. Uh, I'm going to switch that spring out, fix that one. And then I'm just going to button this thing back up. I'll give you your, uh, your FPS numbers. And then I'm going to give you my final thoughts on this thing. So, my final thoughts on the Worker Seagull. I have to say, I'm impressed. Um, is it perfect? No. Uh, the things that I want to change out on it are kind of cosmetic. Um, I personally think they're also semi-functional as well. Well, technically they are functional, but... The things that I just don't like about it are the, for the vertical foregrip, but like I said... While I'm not a fan of vertical foregrips, I'm willing to keep it on here just for, like, the size and not, like, the uh, the size of it. It works. I just wish it had a better one. And the same thing goes for the stock. I understand that you're going for compact minimalist on this, but this just sucks. Um, the fact that you really only have that much purchase to really put into your shoulder... And then if it goes off of that because of the way this is designed, it's just going to shoot right out? No, I'm not a fan of that. Um, I do like the side plates that it comes with, or at least that I got with this, along with the top rail. Um, the fact that the barrels can unscrew, and you that's how you replace them. You don't have to worry about O-rings. You don't have to worry about barrel lugs or anything like that. You literally just unscrew it and screw it. Um, and uh, swap it out and you're good. Uh, the only thing is, though, I would not recommend using this uh, low-powered with the long barrel. Um, it really, the performance I did, I'm not even going to post them, but they were crap. Um, however, speaking of performance, I will start putting up numbers here. So, yeah, this thing actually performs really solid. Uh, with the low powered spring and a short barrel, you're going to be, you may be out of uh, HVZ competition unless they come out with a much lighter spring, but you're getting pretty good numbers out of it. And then switching over to the high powered spring is where you're really going to get power out of it, obviously. Uh, with the short barrel, you're still getting good power out of it, but with the long barrel, for something this size, you're getting some decent performance out of this like you're getting averages of you're gonna have a 170 average out of this thing and that's not terrible at all um especially for what you what you would be paying for this now my pre-order was i believe 120 dollars, so you get a little bit of a discount on it uh retail this is going to be going for 125 and it's not terrible yes there are much cheaper options in the hobby now thanks to dart zone and thanks to uh x shot now but honestly this is still this is worth the money i mean it's a very robust build it does not feel cheap like the like the x shot long shot we had the issues with the uh with the plunger tube on it x shot plastic is not as strong as some of the other brands out there but i mean this thing is solid and you're getting metal parts out of it out of the box um and you're getting good performance out of it too so yeah overall i really like this thing and i mean if you're looking for a small form factor blaster and 
you're wondering, should I get a talent claw? Should I get an SBL? Should I get one of these things? Um, this is definitely an option for it. If you don't want to go a 3D printed route, then yes, definitely go for one of these things because you're getting a talent claw or a uh, SBL sized blaster injected molded well built and worker has a good track record with the hobby on now making definitely quality stuff um the harrier was the first the first real big pickup on it then you have the nightingale and now you have this so i mean and even the swift despite all the take ups is still a pretty solid blaster um just with everything that there is available now i think it's if for what i paid for it it's definitely overpriced at this point but yeah it's a solid entry into uh into our hobby for certain and yeah i kind of give it my seal of approval because not only is this thing fun it's definitely functional so but that's where i'm going to end it for this video so if you enjoy the content we put here on the channel please throw us a like and subscribe Leave us a comment down below. Let me know what you think of the Seagull, um, or if you are planning on now getting one, or you may pass on it because you'd rather have something else. Let me know down in the comments below. I love reading them all. And, oh, don't forget to click that little bell icon. Otherwise, you may not know when me and Arlene are doing our silliness here on the channel. And we have a P.O. box, so if you'd like to send some snail mail, uh, you know, letter writing is a lost art. Uh, and if you write something, maybe I'll read it on a, on a uh, video. So there's that, uh, you know, a little bit of enticing, what can I say? Uh, but <laughs> again, thank you for joining me for this video and I will see you guys next time. Later.